Today God has given me this message. At this situation, whether God will accept our prayers or not, whether God will answer your prayers or not, probably some of you may be suffering. Probably some of our family members may be suffering. Probably we may get the news or you may get the request from some others saying that please pray for our father, mother, brother, sister, uncle, auntie, son, daughter. Please pray so that they shall not be, you know, dead in this country or dead because of this COVID or this viruses. As soon as they hear the news, positive report or positive result, many are saying please see and please pray so they shall not be dead. That's all they are saying it. But they are not able to understand that God is a healer and He can heal them from every part of evil attack and satanic attack. Healing they forget but they remember the death. What is the reason? Because they have heard and they have that fear that this virus is all around the world and this is killing the people. That's all. Jesus Christ of Nazareth when He was with the disciples and they were going to the other shore. And Jesus said, I will not come with you. You go ahead. And uh, Peter and all the disciples, they all took the boat and they started sailing. And when they were going to the other shore, they were going with the word of God. They were going with the command of Jesus. Because Jesus said, go to the other shore. And they were going in the boat. And they were disciples. Those who obeyed the voice of Jesus Christ and going to the other shore. And when they are going to the other shore, the storm came in the midst of the sea. And you know what has happened. You know the story about that. But remember what had happened. Jesus went walking on the water and cooled down the storm. He did not simply say cool down. No, he said be calm. And he talked to the wind and he talked to the sea. And everything became calm. My brothers, my sister. But the disciples, they saw the miracle before. They had also heard him praying. They saw him in several occasions that he's going and laying hands upon the blind, those who cannot see him at all, but they got healed. They have seen that he goes to the people, those who have no bones to walk, no strength to walk, no legs to walk, or some type of weaknesses in their bodies from the birth, some of them are paralyzed. And Jesus is speaking to them and they get up and they take their bed and walk. All this they had seen it, but yet they were not able to cool or calm the storm. They were not able to heal many, those were weak and sick. Jesus only was continuously doing the ministry till he goes away and sets the Holy Spirit comfort and power upon them. Then they realized that this is supposed to be the ministry that Jesus has and taught us and gave us already early. What they were lacking? Why they were not able to you know, cast out the demons, heal the sick, because they were telling Jesus, we could not do it. Some of the time they did it. And they said, it happened just because of your name. But tell us how to pray. Teach us how we should fast. Tell us how we can get this power in our life. My brothers, my sister, disciples asked this to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth with only one reason, that they should receive power. They shall have power in their lives. And without the power of God, they knew that they cannot do anything. They can't cast out demons. They cannot cast out demons. They cannot heal the sick. They cannot raise the dead. They cannot do any type of ministry. And therefore, they were actually longing to have the power of God in their lives. That is the story about, that is the story and the fact when Jesus was on this earth. But another important thing that today you should be able to understand why some of the servants of God are able to do and why not some of the servants of God not able to. Why some of the people in the congregation when they pray they have a reserve of deliverance, healing and blessings and why some of the congregation do not have. And the reason is only one thing, power of God is lacking in that congregation. Power of God is lacking in that servant of God. Power of God is lacking in you. Power of God is lacking in us. And it's not a simply just a part of God. It is your desire. If you do not have a desire to change and to have the part of God, God is also not willing to give you. If you have a desire, God will pour out His Spirit upon you. If you now want to do something for God, then only He will pour out. You want to pray loudly. You want to cast out demons. You want to heal the sick. You want to come early. You want to say, Lord, prepare me. 
because I'm going to pray today, whether I get the time to pray here or not, but my prayer shall go with power. If you come and sit down like that and pray, God will surely make you call and pray. I'm nothing at all. He is my, he will only use my mouth, but he's speaking through the mouth. But for all that, one has to understand, without the power of God, you and I, the prayer cannot bring any manner of result. Power of God is given unto you by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And this race is not going to stop from today onwards. Every one of you and me, and all of us here, we have to remember one thing. Believers cannot be without the power. This I make it a special statement for myself. Believers cannot be without the power. Why? You should say, no, 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 all Christians. No, Christian, all Christians have not accepted Jesus and they are not a savior. What is the meaning of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You are opening your heart to Jesus and you are telling him, See, I am a sinner. I have done all these wrong things against you. I never obeyed your laws. I never obeyed your teachings. I have done all type of cruel things against you. I did not have your word in my mind. I did not obey your commandments. I never had a desire to love you. But now I know. Because you paid the price. You died on the cross. You shed the blood for my sin. And I recognize my sin now. I'm a richer sinner. You washed me and cleansed me in advance 2020 years ago. You hung yourself on the cross of Calvary. You shed your blood, every drop of blood that you had on in your body. And then you died for me and for my penalty and paid the death of penalty in advance and saved my soul from hell. And then you say, you come on, Jesus, you come into my heart because I want you to have you in my heart. The Bible says when you open your heart, he comes in. And when he comes in, what are you then? You have the power of God in you. Who is coming in your heart? Jesus, Jesus is coming. Who is this Jesus? He is the second person of the Holy Trinity. The one who came in the flesh through Virgin Mary. The one who walked on the sea. One who healed the sick. And one who raised the dead, all power and authority was in him and with him, and he gave the authority to the body of Christ. Everyone who believes, he said, everyone who believes in him, and everyone who has in him the same authority, the same power, and same miracles, and same signs and wonders will happen. If you are a believer, if you have accepted him, then remember who you are in the Lord. You have him inside you. His power has to work. When there is a storm of so many trials and tribulations in your life, you need not to worry about it because you have the authority to cool the storm, to make the calm, to make the storm calm. You have the authority to heal your own bodies and heal the bodies of others. You have also authority to open the blind eyes. You have the authority to heal the lame and make them jump and walk. And also, you shall be powerful unless and until you have the power of God. You cannot do that. So he said, it's poverty for all the believers here. All the believers, every one of you, those who are born again in the spirit of water. If you are born again, you will never question about the power of God. You will always say, there is Jesus in my heart and I have the same power. The Bible clearly says, the resurrection power of Jesus is living in you. Why? Because Jesus died and was buried and third day he rose again. And after that he appeared unto the disciples and he gave them the power and authority when he breathed upon them. They become bold. They became bold. They became powerful. They went on preaching the gospel. Now when you are a child of God, when you are a believer, you also have the power. But one thing is lacking in you and me. And that is walking in the power of God. And today's message is that every believer must learn to walk in the power of God. Now remember one important thing. When you decide to walk in the power of God, according to today's psalm, if you understand, the Bible clearly says, righteous man's prayer will be answered. When you cry in tears, that prayer will be answered. So also the word of God teaches so many other things in regards to prayer. But I am teaching something, what I have learned today, just to bring it forward to the congregation. That one has to walk in the power of God to find the victory. Victory for your own self. Victory in your time and tribulation. When things are not happening in your life, when things are not coming to pass in your life, when you are not getting your positions, when you are not getting your blessings, when you do not get what you desire of your heart, you can always call upon the name of the Lord and claim the promise that God will fulfill the desire of your heart. 
So also you have to understand one important thing. Right from the beginning of the service I told you that the devil also wants to stop all your blessing that God wants to give it to you. Then how you will receive your blessing if God has released your blessing? How you will receive your blessing? You have to fight for your blessing. How you will fight? When you have a power you can fight. But when you don't have a power you cannot fight. You are afraid. You cannot stand with the enemy. You cannot go before the enemy. You cannot say to the enemy, get out of my life. You cannot say. Then you fall. Somebody has to lift you up. Somebody has to strengthen you. Somebody has to pray for your healing and your deliverance. And it's not a perfect thing for a man who is born again, who has the spirit of God. My brothers, my sister, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. The remembrance is that through the word of God that God cares for every man and every woman. He does not want you to fall. He does not want you to suffer. He does not want you to be sick. He does not want your marriage to be broken. He does not want any problem to come upon your life. You should not be sick. Neither your family member should be sick. Everything that God has given to you shall be a blessing to you. But the second thing is very important. Verse 8. And the verse 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, yeah. because your adversary the devil. Be sober, always be in war. Be aware what's happening all around. Be sober, be vigilant. Then, because your adversary the devil. Because your adversary, who is your adversary? Who is your adversary? Devil. Who is your adversary? Who is standing against you? Who does not want to give you a blessing? Who blocks your marriages? Who blocks your finances? Who blocks all, all the blessings that God has released upon you? Who blocks your healing? Who does not want you to be healthy and walking in happiness and prosper? Who blocks your prosperity of businesses? Who does that? Who destroys your jobs? Who destroys your work? Who destroys all that? The devil. The devil does not want the child of God to be happy, even the world. It doesn't mean that when you become a child of God, devil is only working against the child of God. No. Child of God is able to notice now when he becomes the child of God. But before he was not noticing, before I was not believing that there is a devil. And when so many things and miracles and signs and wonders, when I saw what God was doing in the congregation, my mind was broken up totally that these are different type of devils and how they are working. Some of them cut out their names also. Some of them are cut out and how many are possessed in their bodies. Some of them are told how they are coming to their bodies. And coming back to the word of God, the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the, your adversary, the devil. If the answer is given, the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, like a roaring lion, walking about, walking around, going around, whom to catch, whom to catch. You hear the word of God, you don't dedicate your life to God. You know the scriptures, but you don't want to follow the scriptures. You know the commandments of God, but you still say, I will delay. Some of the times the God is telling you, this is the command. This is the command. Jesus has done it. You do it. He said, no, no, no. I will still take my time. And remember, for you, God's eyes are upon you, but the devil is very closer to you to destroy your life. Devil is very close to this time. You must think about your age. You must think about all the things that's happening in your life. You must think about why when other people are getting and the worldly people are getting this type of blessing, why this is not come to me. You should be. Because the devil who is uh, like a roaring lion seeking whom he should devour. He wants to break and destroy your blessing, your life, your daily life, your joy, your jobs, your blessings, your family, your husband, your wife, your marriage and having children, children, everything he wants to do. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14, the Bible clearly says, He often appears like a fallen angel, the angel of the light. In Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14, the devil often appears like an angel of light. Now the testimony that I gave about the young girl who lost her husband, Imagine, it's not a, just a simple thing. She got married, she lived with him, they became one flesh. And they were living their life, never expected that death could make them apart. Never they thought. What I cannot forget, every step I take, I, she said, every step I take is before my eyes. I turn to the right, wants to sleep, he's there. I turn to the left, I want to sleep, he's there. 
When I'm eating the food, I remember his voice. This food is tasty. When I'm eating something, he used to always say, don't prepare this food. This is not for us. I don't like this type of food. Sometimes I'm tasting food and sometimes I'm, you know, verification of details is to tell them. My brothers, my sister, one year of life, one year of life, into marriage and suddenly the disaster. Not able to go and touch him at the last. Not able to go and see him at the last. Not able to hear his voice at the last. Pipes are given, he cannot speak. Breathing is going on, tears are coming down, but nobody to talk and nobody to answer. He cannot take his phone and answer. After the life is gone totally, oh, it is so sorrowful, so painful. My brothers, my sister, the Bible clearly says, the devil appears unto you as an angel of light. They said, we prayed with somebody. This is what I am to tell you. They said, we prayed with somebody else. And they gave us the answer that God is doing this and God wants to do this. And you did not to listen to anybody. And if your mind and if your heart is saying to you, you can continue. And today she is asking me so many questions. How come from your side like that? How come from other side like that? Now who will give the answer? Who will give the answer? I told her the answer only you will find in the book of the Bible. God gives every answer in the book of the Bible. Never touch the book of the Bible in the entire years of her life. She said, you are a good Christian. I said, you find in the mirror. No, he said, you are better than you are. I said, okay, very good. I'm happy if you are better than me. I will learn from you if you are saved in doing what Jesus has and Jesus was doing and Jesus was showing his disciples. If the disciples were doing the same thing what Jesus was doing, Jesus did not to teach the disciples why he was teaching them to pray. Because their prayer was normal. Why he was teaching them to cast out the demons? Because they were not doing it. They were in synagogue. They were in the you know, synagogue churches. They were carrying the Bibles. They were speaking about the Bibles. They were priests and high priests. And when they saw Jesus casting out the demon, they said, he's casting out the demon by the biggest demon. He's possessed. He is gone out of his mind. He is lunatic. Imagine, imagine, imagine. And therefore God wants you to understand this. And wants you to be powerful. And filled with the power of God. And none of you believers from tonight hours will say. How to pray brother. What shall I do brother. How to walk in power. No. You have to walk from today hours with the power of God. And be with the power. And you shall be walking in the power of God. The power of God has to be with you. And you are born again. You have the Spirit of God. You are born again. You have Jesus. You are born again. You have the Holy Ghost. You are born again. You have the Holy Spirit of God in you. Who's Holy Spirit? Power of God. Decide to walk with the power of God. Come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14. The Bible clearly says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Angel of light, he also comes. You should be careful when some other Christian tells you, no, 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 this is right, that is okay, this is okay. No, even if they get the vision, you analyze who is this person who is talking about the vision, who is talking about the revelation. Now, one more thing. Now, don't think because you have family problems or something is coming up, therefore I'm telling you, no. This is God who message for me yesterday. My, dad, my son delayed yesterday to come and I was asking the Lord to give me the message. Never my message gets over within the same day. I have to continue the same next day also. Open the computer again, check up everything, add some uh, addresses, then the message gets complete. But yesterday I completed this message because God gave me this message. I said, why the people are not getting completely healed? Why I am still hearing the people, those who are lost, their gamers? Why I am still hearing when I am taking the name of Jesus, the same name, when he called the dead ones, came back to life. And how come when I pray, and when I pray for the people, why they are not getting healed? Why they are not coming back to life? Why their lungs are not getting functioned properly? Why they are not getting the strength to come up? Few only got healed, but many got dead. And the word of the Lord clearly says, because he often appears as a light of angel. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan himself transformed himself like an angel of light because when he fell down, he got that glory while falling down. My brothers, my sister, your structure will remain the same even after the death, even after the resurrection. Your structure will remain the same after the resurrection. 
for the final judgment of God when God is taking the final judgment with my soul has to go to hell or heaven my structure will be the same many will be seeing my structure it may not be bone or physical hell but the structure will be the same they can recognize who is this man and they can recognize where is he going or where God is sending him for the final time so the the angel those are fallen angels they also appear like a light they have and they carry that light and deceive many and the Bible says they are wrongly ministering to the people second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 verse 15 therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness and some of them they are showing as they are as if they are righteous and some of you are believing like that doing the things through them they are only religious leaders they are not righteous you must analyze whether they are righteous or not many they are religious people like that in Christianity I am not talking I am talking, I'm not talking about any other religion I am talking about our own religion because they don't follow the laws they don't follow the teachings they don't follow the commandments they don't follow Jesus Christ they follow religion they follow all the practices of the religion and the Bible clearly says they do it because their understanding is not changed their mind is darker they are ministering as the evil one has already given them the thought and they do it in a wrong first Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 nevertheless first Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 3 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith and this is what I'm going to come in the coming days we are going to talk about the end days we are going to talk about all what is happening all around the world today why so many deaths is God happy about it is this sent by God or is it sent by somebody else who is powerful God is not powerful or what so many deaths are going on good people are dying preachers are dying teachers are dying my brothers my sister the word of the Lord clearly says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith latter times some will depart from faith why they will depart from their faith their faith is in the Lord Jesus but they will depart from the faith why because they cannot bear the trial and tribulation because they cannot have the sufferings today this girl is telling I don't want to remain any more Christian now I think it's better that I change myself because God has not saved. I asked her the question, which God has not saved her? About whom you are talking? You don't know your God well. And what are you judging with your mind? Nowadays, this is only going on. My brothers, my sister, we are also making a mistake being a believer. We are not able to understand the true God. We are not able to understand the truth. And we are not able to understand whether I am following or whether you are following the truth or not. We still blabber. We still talk. We still do the things which is not to be done. And we say, oh, it's okay. So coming back to the verse 2. Verse 2, please. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. That's not happening at all. What of God they twist and teach you? Alright, then? Having their conscience seared with that hot iron. They, their conscience is not changed. There are Christian leaders like that. You tell them the Ten Commandments, they will never accept they are leaders. They are dedicated their life to preach the gospel, teach the gospel. Where they are preaching the gospel? Where they are teaching the gospel? They are doing all type of religious practices, but the truth is not given. When the truth is not given, all the people, those who follow, they are in darkness. They do not know the truth. And what is happening? The devil is taking the upper part like an holy angel, like a light of angel, he is deceiving them and telling them, you are doing right, continue, continue, continue. My brothers, my sisters, the Christians all over the world has to be careful. But more careful has to be the one, those are born again. If the born again does not remain careful, the born again will be destroyed by the elect, by the evil, by the wrong ministers, by the wrong people. And you will not know what is happening in your life. You have to, the days are going to come more evil. People nowadays differentiate between the prayer and the They don't want the prayer of the other son of God. They feel that, no, if I go to another servant of God, I'm actually, I'll be cursed from the other servant and other denomination where I'm going to the church or where I'm going for prayers. Why? The mind is narrow. He is not or she is not able to understand what exactly is there. You should be able to understand whether this doctrine goes with that man's prayer or minister's prayer or not. This has to be one. 
They believe the same faith. They must have the same faith. They must be able to believe the same faith. That Jesus came down to this earth, died on the cross of Calvary, was buried and rose again. This faith has to continue in all Christians. If this faith is not continued, and if they are doing something more than that, their faith is not full. Some of them are praying for the dead people. Some of them are praying for the saints. Some of them are having the special services for the saints. Where did now God say, and the word of God say, and even Jesus forbidden for all to do that. Paul writes to all the churches and third church of Thessalonica very carefully so that once you are dead, you have no ceremony about it. No ceremony. You cannot go to the grave and pray. But how much time we spend to go to the grave and how much time we serve it there and how much time we run so many prayers there and what is going to bring the reward? Who is going to be rewarded? The dead is gone away. We are together. But then what is happening in their prayer? You are getting corrupt and your mind is getting corrupt and your soul is getting corrupt. You are not knowing the word of God and because of them, your spirit is also getting defiled. The Bible clearly says, therefore the Christian has to be warned and to be careful about all their activities. Because some of them are joining like that and they destroy their own soul. Some of them are joining some other people not knowing their soul, is, their soul will be destroyed and they are joining wrong. Love does not make you to sin. Love does not make you to sin. Love does not make you to continue in wrong doctrines. Love towards God, love towards people does not make you or do anything that is unpleasing to God. Love will always tell you to obey the law. Love will always tell you to be righteous and holy. Love will always warn you whether you do a righteous thing or wrong thing. There are also brothers, no brother. There are also Christians, no brother. There are also neighbors, no brother. There are also like that, no brother. Like that strength is a totally wrong thing for a believer. A believer has to analyze the book of the Bible. Book of the Bible. They have analyzed. He is a brother, but does he follow? She is a brother, does she follow? That is the Christian family, but do they follow the same word of God? Or they have a different doctrine? Your prayer will not be acceptable there, because God will not answer your prayer. You are meeting with the unbelievers and doing your prayer. No way your prayer will be answered. Be warned about it. God wants it. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 and 13 and 14. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Okay. In departing from the living God. Departing from the living God. How many of you believe our God is living? Amen. You must be so happy to say that and your faith must be so bubbling faith that when this question comes you must say, Yes, I believe He is a living God. Because wherever two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord, the Lord is there. Where is he? He is here. He is not on any cross. He is not in any idols. He is not in any pictures. He is not in any type of images. But he is here practically. But I am not able to see. You are not able to see. Because this is a sinning body. A corrupted body. You can only see him in the spiritual eyes. But not with the physical eyes. And if you have a belief that Jesus is alive after the death, then how come you still practice idol worship? How come you still go back to the idol? Therefore the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 3 verse 12 and 13, some of them are harder, they are hard, bias, deceitful. Come on. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Departing from the living God. It means now, listen to this. I am telling every one of you, those who are seated here, you worship any other thing, it means you don't know about the living God. You worship any other thing and you join with the others like that, you don't know the living God. You feel that you are okay, your love is wrong then. Your love is not towards God, your love is towards people. Those who do not love God, then can your prayers be right? Can your love be right? Coming back to the word of God, then verse 13, 14. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. By mistake also, not knowing also that Jesus is alive, 
and I'm supposed to worship the living God. You shall get into the disciple of sin. Unknowingly somebody should deceive you and you should say it's all okay brother. He is also a Christian leader. He said it is okay, no problem at all. We are also knowing Christ, you are also knowing Christ, we are serving Christ. No. If there is no separation between your serving God, God, living God, and serving the all unwanted things, then you do not know that God is living. Your faith is actually not proper. Your heart is hardened. Not only that, but this simple sin is getting in your life. My brothers, my sister, this should never happen. It's better that many people question, you know, recently somebody questioned me, a good spiritual person, a good spiritual leader questioned me, brother, but these things are all happening, they are also not doing any type of burial services, will that soul go to heaven? And you have the answer. The good people are not actually brought into the church, they were brought into home, they were brought and prayed, but they are taken from the hospital and straight away they go to the grave. They are asking whether this soul will be saved or not saved. The body is there, the soul is there in that body? Of course not. Is there righteousness is seen? Nothing. Is there holiness is seen in the body? Nothing. The Bible clearly says they are already dead. They have hands but they cannot handle. They have mouth, they cannot speak. They have mouth, they cannot worship. They have eyes, they don't know where is God now. Because finish, everything is dead. And God is warning you, you should not be like that dead man. You should be knowing who is living in you and to whom you are serving. Therefore, you must get into the power of God. You must learn to walk in the power of God. And the Bible clearly says, come on, 12, 13 and 14. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief mm. in departing from the living God. Yes. But exhort one another daily. Lift up one another through the word of God. While it is called today. Yes. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin. Okay. Then. For, for we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. We are. Verse 14 says. We are. Made partakers of Christ. We are partakers of Christ. None of anything else. If there is no Christ, you cannot pray there. If there is no Christ, you cannot continue your prayer there. You cannot have fellowship with them. And also, you should be very careful what God is saying to you in verse 14. That for, for we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. We understood. I never understood that. I was a religious practitioner. I never understood. The day that I understood that Jesus died for my sin, I started believing in Jesus. The day that I understood that Jesus was dead, and third day he rose again, I started worshipping him, and started preaching, teaching, and understanding the Bible that he is a living God. You have to know this. You have to know this. The word of the Lord clearly says, don't harden your heart. Remember the deceitful sin that comes through any other religious practices. Also remember that first day you came to know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is a living God, serving as a living God till you and I die. My brothers, my sister, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12 verse 8 and 9, the Bible clearly says, Therefore, or he that exhorted, or exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Yeah. He that ruleth with diligence, he that soweth mercy, with cheerfulness. And verse 9 says, Let, let love be without dismunition, dismunition. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. good. Again, let love be without dissimulation. Love, love cannot compromise with the sin. Love cannot compromise that you love a living God and love an idol. Cannot compromise. You cannot say because I was born, my brothers, my sister, God wants you. If it is your father, mother's, you know, generational religion practices, but now you know the truth, why not you open your eyes and see the truth and save them and get saved yourself? Why don't you speak about the gospel and tell them to see the gospel? Surely they will not accept. They will say that you are teaching me. We brought you up. We gave education. We taught you. And you are teaching us. Surely they will say. But at the same time, you must be able to be prepared so well to tell them the truth in a right manner. You stand firm, they will come. You don't stand firm, they will never come to salvation. That's why today so many other families, including some of our family members, are not saved at all. Not saved because you are not separated. You mingle with them and did everything wrong. 
and you thought your sins are not there. You are righteous man, a righteous woman. You are born again brother, born again sister. No. You have done tradition, you have done religion, you have done religious prayers, you have done religious practices. From where you are born again? You have gone back to the dead nature and dead religion and dead practices. A man who is dead to the old cannot come back to the old again. It means you are not dead in the water properly. A dead man cannot come back to those things again. And the Bible clearly says this verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. And? Above that which is evil. Yeah. Cleave to that which is good. And the word of the Lord clearly says you cannot compromise the other word. The Bible clearly says therefore the believer has to understand. If you have to be a really a true believer, if you have to know the power of God, if you want to do a great ministry, you need not to be doing like me, sacrifice everything, don't have job and all, and become a pastor or something like that, then only will have a power. No. Power can be given to you. When I was working, I was still having so much of ministry. People were getting sick in the houses. People were just falling down here and there. I never imagined people used to suddenly fall down in the time of prayer. Before I was closing my eyes and praying, when I saw all these things happening, then I started opening my eyes. God gave me one night a command. This command you have to follow because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall. Yes. And what they shall confess, Jesus Christ of Lord it is. No. And that command I started saying, and people, those are really possessed. Nobody is to stand. They fall here, there, 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 there. They to fall. Why? Because the power of God has to go like that. You have to walk into that power and get the victory for yourself and for others and you must be there. Don't put your faith in the pastors, please. And especially those who roam around the pastors, that is up to you. Coming back to the word of God, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Who is our helper then? Who is our guider and who is our helper? One more word and then we shall go for prayers. You must pray tonight. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Take it in your mind perfectly. There is no other mediator, no mediator. You go and tell somebody else, our Christian leaders, they will not believe. But one has to believe God's word. If a man does not believe God's word, he is a good religion person, but he has no faith in the living God. If you reject the word of God, and if you reject the teachings of Jesus, then surely there is something wrong with you. The word of God clearly says there is no other mediator, there is only one mediator between God and man. Remember, put this thought in your mind and you should have no other mediator. There is no beginner for you, there is no ender for you. There is only one who started the word, God the Father. There is the only one who sacrificed for our life, for our sins, only Jesus Christ. There is only one who worked in you to give you power, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God gives you power. The Holy Spirit of God gives you that power. With that power only, the believer can walk in the power of God. The next thing the Bible says, 4 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. He is our advocate. He is nobody else. He is our advocate. You know what is the meaning of advocate? I will explain to you. Come on. Let's read the word of God. My little children, this thing write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. The Bible clearly says he is the advocate. He is the advocate. Suppose there is a you know family problems, you go to the advocate. Sometimes you have property problems, you go to the advocate. Advocate brings the plea of a husband or wife. Sometimes advocate brings the plea of the you know uh, defender and those who are actually opponent, whatsoever it may be. They bring both of them and they fight in the court. What they say? They say, no, this man is just. No, that man is just. He said he is the owner, but yet he has done wrong. Some other advocate proves like that. How can the owner of the building can be wrong? But he is ready to prove. Similar way, the Bible clearly says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, to my little children, was this thing right I unto you, yeah. that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I just want to explain about this advocate now. Listen to this carefully and we are going to pray. Suppose a person who has robbed something and having a court case who was in the prison and now brought forward to the judge. And the judge is saying that you are caught red-handed. You have done this type of case. 
you are not this type of material and you are a robber therefore you have a seven years of imprisonment for the time for the, uh, the the thing that you have wrong and for the thing that you have done wrong and you have to take this punishment and he declares but somebody else comes and he said seven years of imprisonment whatever is there what is the charges for seven years seven lakhs of rupees he said now it is already paid the law comes and says that this somebody on behalf of him has already paid what they paid seven years of penalty is already paid in advance therefore this man is no guilty this man has to be free though he is a robber though he has done wrong though he is standing the judgment and the judgment is going to be declared but he is called free now why he is called free because somebody has paid the price similar way for our sins and for our curses Jesus has paid the price that if Jesus has paid the price, what you and I are supposed to be? Free from sin, free from curse and sicknesses, free from all type of devilly death and untimely death. We have to be free. It cannot happen. And why it's happening? Because we have not understood the price that Jesus has paid. We have not taken that price for ourselves and saved ourselves from sickness or from sin and from curses and sicknesses and untimely death. That's the penalty of death. And that's why many Christians are dying today. They are supposed to be powerful. They are supposed to live it. They are supposed to have a long life. They are not supposed to suffer sicknesses. Because the ways of the Christians are not powerful. They have not understood what they are supposed to do. This is what is happening. The Bible says, therefore you should know who is the mediator. Jesus only and nobody else. Who is the advocate who fights for you and redeems you from all type of curses and penalty of your death. Jesus Christ our Lord. And finally, the Bible clearly says, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted He is able to succor them that are tempted Verse 17 also please As of the mercy of the Father yeah. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. He does. Jesus. Nobody else. When you go to another person for that. Your sins are not forgiven. Anybody else. Whoever religion may be. Or whatever the sins may be. No. It cannot be. Then was 18 says. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted. Now I want to tell you one thing. Even Jesus was tempted. But yet he paid the penalty. What did he do? He went to the cross. He hung between the heaven and the earth. He shed the all the blood that was in his body. Who has done this for you to be saved? You will never find any man, any woman, or in the book of the Bible, you will never find any religious man or woman. They must have cast out demons. They must have walked on water. They must have divided the water. They must have brought fire from heaven. They must have done so many miracles. They must have stopped the sun and moon. But yet they did not die for people. There is only one man who paid the penalty of the sins of the world and his name is Jesus. Jesus. There is only one person who shed the blood of the cross of Calvary and his name is Jesus. Jesus. There is only one through whom you can get the salvation and through nobody else and his name is Jesus. Jesus. And through Jesus only you can get into the heaven and nobody can save your soul. Only by the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, by the sacrificial life of Jesus Christ and Christ. Everyone can receive that power and through that power you can walk victoriously and his name is Jesus. Jesus. And my brothers, my sister, if you want to have a victorious and powerful life in Christianity, you must learn the Bible. You must read the Bible. You must understand the Bible. You cannot be here and there. Any brother, any sister who is here and there, who is with the righteous and unrighteous, who is with the holiness and unholiness, who says this Christianity, this Christianity, I'm telling you, I am telling you today, not a warning from me, but the truth. We are not saved. We are only doing the things of the earth, but guaranteed that our souls are not saved. People, those who are dying at the last moment, they say, brother, never knew, only Jesus is appearing. We pray to so many, but nobody is appearing. Nobody is coming. Only Jesus is appearing. But when Jesus is appearing, why he did not speak to us? Why he did not say, you will be healed from COVID? Because he has already paid the penalty. He has come to tell you, even if you go away, you will be in the kingdom of God. Because like an advocate, he has done everything for you. 
He stood it. He stood for you. He has paid the penalty. He has paid the penalty of sin, curse, and death. Through him only you can go to heaven, and not anybody. And therefore, the Bible clearly says, one has to learn to walk in the power of God. That walking in the power of God only make your life victorious. Make a good decision, and let us have a worship songs today, so that we shall be powerful. We shall be blessed. Our mind shall come back to others, and we shall make a decision. Three hours, I shall walk with the power of God. God.